How's everybody doing tonight? 2010 stands out as one of the worst years I can remember in recent history. It didn't help that I was one of Jehovah's Witnesses at the time. And if it could have happened, it did in 2010. It was like a domino effect. I uh, had sunk into a major depression like I'd never sunk into before. I had lost my job and everything else just toppled right after that. And, uh, well, you know, being a JW, it kind of compromises you. October of that year, the worst thing that happened was that my dog had died. Uh, most people, if you're not a pet owner, you probably couldn't understand that. Pet owners could understand that. That was devastating to me. I, that, I laid that dog on my lap for about two hours before I could stomach burying her. You know, and the funny thing was, being one of Jehovah's Witnesses, we all know that JW say some pretty stupid things. I had one woman say to me in the, at the Kingdom Hall, it was just a dog. And I said to her, I said, now I know why you're single. Well, as her mouth dropped, I walked away. A couple of the elders made stupid comments. I guess they feel the need to say something to be comforting when, really, <laughs> it didn't help. Two elders at separate times said, well, you know, this is a good thing. The first elder I walked away from. The second one, I said, explain to me how death is a good thing. And he says to me, well, that frees you up more time in the ministry. And I'm thinking, okay, the dog didn't stop me from going into the ministry. What these idiots didn't understand was I had the dog for a very long time. There were a lot of changes in my life. Jobs changed, women come and went, but the dog was constant and the dog was always happy to see me. Yeah, let's face it, we're always going to outlive pets. They don't last forever, but it doesn't make it any less devastating. I mention this because I had caught XJW International's video very early in the wee hours Sunday morning before work. I haven't been on YouTube very much lately because I've been working pretty much around the clock, but I caught this one video and I hadn't watched the videos leading up to it, but apparently she had lost a pet that she was very attached to. She was visibly upset. And after the, her pet had died, some strange things had started happening around her house. Whether it was paranormal or her grief that manifested, I don't know. In my lifetime, I've seen some pretty strange things, most of which I'm not going to go into. But uh, you couldn't tell me I didn't see them. The earliest pet that I remember, and I was too young to really understand much of it. This is before, even before my younger brother was born. My father had this big fuzzy black cat that was tough as nails. And the fact that this cat was a male cat meant it wasn't very loyal. Male cats wander. The cat would disappear for several years on end, make periodical appearances. <clears throat> well, I finally, the cat disappeared for good. We never saw it again. I was in my teens. We didn't have any cats at that time. My early teens. I was probably between 11, 12, and 13. It was early in the morning. The sun wasn't even up yet. The kitchen was dark, but the outside light was shining in the room so I could see the kitchen. As I'm walking through the kitchen, I could clearly see this fuzzy cat on the other side of the, uh, the, other side of the room. Sorry, guys, I'm slurring. I'm very tired. It was walking towards me. I figured, well, a cat must have got in the house or something. As it got closer to my leg, it looked like it was going to rub up against my leg. I proceeded to reach down to pet it. It kept following it and following it and following it until I hit my legs. Couldn't see any cat. Couldn't feel any cat. Looked around. 
there was no cap there. <clears throat> I didn't uh, think too much of it for some reason. I just continued about it, never mentioned it again to anybody. I had seen a lot of bizarre things, especially at a very younger age, right throughout my whole life. I think uh, one of the earliest things I had seen, my uh, mother had a friend that was a widow, lived in this gloomy house up on the hill. And she would take me and my two brothers up there to visit her at night on occasion. She had six kids. So obviously she was a widow, she was struggling. The nine of us were playing upstairs. And we're all marching down the hallway, going downstairs. I was last in line and I passed by this bedroom and proceeded to look in. I was maybe four or five at the time, but I clearly saw a head suspended in midair, just hissing at me. Okay, it's a head, it's hissing. <clears throat> For some reason I didn't react to it, I just continued on my way. As the years went by, I mentioned this to a few people. Funny, we all know JWs and the homogenized answers. <clears throat> the, a the average person I mentioned it to would say, you're four or five years old, you just imagined it. Jehovah's Witnesses? Oh, wait, it had to have been demons. Excuse me for a second, guys. But everything to them was demons. I mean, when I started studying, everything I owned was, everything I owned was demon-possessed. I had a ring that they tried to tell me had demons. Not this one. They even tried to convince me my dog was demonic. Yeah. The average person would say it was, yeah, it was just their imagination. Whether or not I had conjured, conjured this up in my head, I don't know. Uh, whether XJW International for grief had conjured it up, I don't know. Whether it was paranormal, I don't know. It seems to me, in most cases, how many times have we heard somebody passing away and they either, something always happens in the house, they're nothing bad, but they notice a scent in the house that they associated with the person that died, or some people that actually see the person or they hear the person, or even a pet like JW XJW International, could the brain actually be powerful enough to conjure these things. When you consider humans only use 3% of their brain, and it still is an incredible piece of equipment. Uh, a lot of talk is talked about Adam and Eve and their perfection. There's a lot of talk about their physical perfection, but very little about their mental aptitude. If somebody had a perfect brain, and they actually use 100% of it, what kind of abilities would they have? We really don't know. Even with 3% of the brain, it is quite a powerful thing. So could it be that when somebody is grieving, they're actually conjuring these things up to where they're real? I granted when I saw the suspended head, or when I saw this cat, I wasn't grieving. But at the time, you couldn't tell me I was imagining it. I saw it there. I, uh, when I saw this cat walking towards me, it kind of took me off guard. I wasn't even thinking about it, but there was a cat there. Was it my imagination, or was it some sort of paranormal activity? I mentioned this to an elder just in passing one time. And he said, well, you know, sometimes demons like to make themselves manifest. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe it was my own brain. And as far as anybody who's lose somebody, whether it be a family member or a pet, could it be their own grieving that actually conjures it? I don't know. But it's probably best not to overthink it. It's probably best not to try to explain it off. It's probably just to grieve, deal with it, and move on. Well, I mean, that's something that nobody has a monopoly on. We've all lost somebody, family members, loved ones, friends, even pets. So it's best just to deal with it 
and not try to figure it out and give an answer. Anyways, guys, I'd love to hear your comments on the subject. I just caught this video, was it yesterday morning? Yesterday morning. Anyways, guys, I'd love to hear your comments. And can you also believe it has been one year today since the Warwick protest? I don't know where this year went to. Anyways, guys, I want to say thanks again. And if you come across this video, hit the subscribe button. And I will talk to you soon. You guys have a good night.